Is this real or fake? What about this one? And this one? And this one? I'm Samantha Johnson. This is Digital Dilemma. And in today's episode, we'll be discussing the impact of artificial intelligence on the production and consumption of visuals. Artificial intelligence can create photorealistic images in a matter of seconds of people and places that never existed and events that never happened. And it's getting better and better at it. San Francisco-based independent research lab Midjourney has released another update to its AI image software, offering a new zoom out feature and promising improved aesthetics and sharper images and users have been ecstatic. So does this mean no more seven finger hands and distorted eyes? Features that clearly allowed us to identify AI generated images. Creative giant Adobe has also entered the game, launching its AI powered technology system Firefly and introducing the generative fill feature for its game changing Photoshop software. Users will be able to instantly add, extend, and remove content from images using simple text prompts. If you're a professional level creator, it's a massive productivity gain. You can suddenly realize that your, your idea is much faster. And if you're a beginner, if you're somebody who's not as advanced with the tools, you can now accomplish a uh, creative task, realize visions in your head that you just wouldn't have been able to before. Adobe says that their tool is different from other AI image creators because of the way it's trained. It's designed to be safe for commercial use. So these AI tools, it's all about the data they train on. That's what they learn and that determines what they can create. With Firefly, we trained it on licensed content from the Adobe stock collection, which is hundreds of millions of very high quality, highly moderated content that is designed for commercial use. Social media has been buzzing with test videos. Generative fill is so wild, users say. But as exciting as this is to many, others are worried. I spoke to Fred Richin, the world-renowned photography professor, former award-winning editor of the New York Times magazine, and author of three books on digital photography. The problem is going to be that people just stop believing the actual photographs, and, and it's really the end of a sense of of what's going on outside your own neighborhood, because there's there's very little way to confirm what's happening. The experts can't keep up with it. The forensic people can't keep up with it. There's no labeling standards. And even if there are, a lot of people, you know, would not follow them. But also in terms of, you know, how does democracy function? If you don't know what's going on, how do you know who to vote for, what to vote for, what's going on somewhere else? This image won the prestigious 2023 Sony World Photography Awards in the Creative Open category, but it's not even a photograph and it completely fooled the judges. In fact, it's an AI generated image created by the German photo media artist Boris Eldarsson. And after the win, he revealed the truth and refused the award. I think it's important that photo competitions update their guidelines because photographs and AI-generated images that I call promptographs are not the same. The power of photography since its inception was to record the visible. The belief then was that the camera does not lie. The photograph showed us stuff that sometimes we didn't want to see. It was like dialectical. You didn't want to see that there was a war in Vietnam. You didn't want to see that there's climate change. Photographs from Vietnam shook the world, galvanizing public opinion against the war. Photos of the Tiananmen Square massacre showcased the world, the brutality with which the Chinese government responded to its protesters. Photographs kept winning while governments lost. Experts estimate that within the next five to 10 years, 95% of all images online will be AI generated. And many of these images will look like they came straight out of a history book. As an image creator, I love AI because it liberates me from restrictions, from material restrictions. It doesn't matter if it's warm or cold outside, if it's light or day, what location I am, what gear I have, what models I have, I'm working purely for my imagination, 
And the material I use now is my knowledge, my experience. But there are certain parts that I'm also concerned. If I step, if I put on different glasses, if I'm a citizen of a democracy, I see the potential of disinformation, how easy it is to create fake images and how easy it is to distribute them via social media. So the question is, what can we do to secure um, authentic images, to have a basis of facts, what has happened, or is the future just full of alternative facts? AI technology is not just used in images, it's also used to create and alter videos. The FBI has informed me that it is very likely that these are visitors of extraterrestrial nature. Reacting to deep fakes and digitally manipulated videos online, Intel has created Fake Catcher. And according to the company, this technology can detect fake videos with a 96% accuracy rate. Fake Catcher is looking at the blood flow. So when your heart pumps blood, it goes to your veins and your veins and your skin change color. And that color change is computationally visible. AI generated videos of English speaking newscasters have been used for spreading disinformation in Venezuela. The same technology was implemented to promote propaganda in Burkina Faso and China. I think as a society, we, we are beyond, beyond that point that we can just look at it and understand that it is fake or real. We need detection for elections, for celebrity uh, uh, rights, and how we can protect their reputation. One area where deepfakes started to be populated is actually for adult content. Recognizing the urgency for the ethical engagement of AI-generated content, over 40 experts from law, art, entertainment, technology and activism attempted an action plan for 2023. This plan includes labeling and disclosing synthetic content, digital dignity and likeness rights, disclosure technologies that would allow us to know how and where media was created, consent from the perspective of the most vulnerable, robust consolidated takedown processes, and finally, global participation in emerging EU and US law. As the internet gets inundated with AI-generated images and videos, Fred is concerned that we might lose grip on reality too fast, too soon. To me, the, all of this is an issue of power. If you're in an affluent country and you can manipulate the media the way you want it, you could start at that point Nothing else matters. You know, there may be an earthquake in Turkey, but I don't believe it anymore. I don't believe the images. I don't have to do anything. You know, there may be some horrible, you know, racist injustice in another city, but I don't believe it because it's just an image. But the people who need, you know, intervention or support of some sort, the people who've suffered an earthquake or a famine or whatever, if others don't believe the image, then those things don't exist to others. You know, it's like the tree falling in the forest making no noise because nobody hears it.